What's going on everyone, Mike here. Welcome to another Symfony tutorial. Today we're going to talk about page design, more specifically speed screens. We create speed screens in order to make our employees faster and more efficient. So what exactly is a speed screen? A speed screen is a specific area of the POS where we combine a lot of the common and most used items. And who uses these particular speed screens? We find these speed screens more often in fast-paced scenarios such as bar, clubs, or cafeterias. So what does a speed screen look like? As you can see here on this particular screen, we have a combination of beers here at the top then liquors of all kinds combined, then we have glasses of wine, rosés, champagnes, some regular drinks, and then some cocktails. Depending on the restaurant that you are running, you can also add food items here, appetizers, or anything else that you might need. So let's jump into EMC and see how we would program a speed screen. All right, here we are in EMC. In order to program our speed screen, we have to open up page design. Now, page design can be accessed at all levels in Symfony, enterprise level, property, revenue center, or even the zone. Where you would like to add your speed screen is all up to you. It's a personal preference. I could, for example, if I just had a bar speed screen, I would be tempted to just add it at the bar revenue center level. But in order to do that, I would have to create an override for that particular page at the RVC level. And I don't want to do that. If you want to learn more about overrides, please check out our video on uh, creating and removing overrides. So I'm going to add mine at the enterprise level and then just open page design. Next, I'm going to open my transactions page. And I'm going to change my aspect ratio to 16 to 9 to match my widescreen workstations. If we take a look here, we have a food section, a drink section. We already have a speed bar created, a functions area and payment. So basically what we want to create is this area here. Now, depending on the items that you will sell the most, you, will, you can change these around, of course. You can even include menu items or anything else. So what all these buttons are, are individually hard-coded buttons. They are not screen lookups, the way we have them programmed for food and drink items. The idea here is to create an area in the screen where, for example, if somebody walks up to the bar and let's say it's a group of three people, they would like to order two beers, a glass of wine and an appetizer, it would be very easy for the bartender to order all three items from the same screen as opposed to running around between the food screen appetizer section, then looking for the beer, then looking for the wine. So let's create a speed screen from scratch. The first thing that I'm gonna do is decide where I'm gonna place it. I'm just gonna use this top navigation bar here and add another item. So if you click your top navigation bar, you can just click the add navigation bar item hyperlink, and then I'm gonna have to name it. I'm just going to name it speed B because I already have a bar speed bar. And then I'll have to decide if this is going to be a simple content area or if I want any tabs. In my situation, I'm just going to go with simple content area. So it's going to look like this. I'm not going to have any side tabs here. But if you're going to have multiple side tabs within your speed screen, make sure to select the tabbed item. So I'm going to click this and hit OK. And now I have to change the aspect ratio again. There we go. And there I have my new tab here. The next thing I would do is kind of map out my area in the screen here and decide how I'm going to place my different items. Depending on where you're going to use your speed screen, if it's going to be in a bar, a club or cafeteria, what I would do is I would print a sales report for that particular revenue center, pick the top selling items in each category and then decide to place those in a particular order. So once you have your order laid out, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click, click add a button, and then you can move this button around and you can make it as big or as small as you want. Uh, I wouldn't recommend going too small 
in having a whole lot of buttons here because that's just going to defeat the purpose of making the bartenders or cashiers faster. So just kind of pick a middle of the way a size and then go with that one. So once I have my button here, I can change the color. So I'm going to make it this amber color. And from the type, I'm actually going to select menu item and I'm going to go to my beer section by clicking this little arrow here. And I can just type in beer in my situation because I know I have my headers labeled as domestic beer and imported beer. So see, I have here my domestic beer in the 35,000s and then I have my imported beer in the 36,000s. So I can erase the name from there. And then I can just type in 35,000 and one. So if I just leave the 3500 in my case, these are my domestic beers here. So I can choose Bud. And then once I have my item here, you can just click this hyperlink that says generate legend. So then whatever the menu item says here is going to fill out in the legend. Now, notice my button is kind of big, but the writing is kind of small. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to advanced. I'm going to check the box for font size and I'm going to increase it from 16 to 25. See how that looks. I think that looks pretty good. The size is good. And now that I have one of my buttons, all I have to do is right click on it, copy it and then just right click and paste. So now I have a copy of this button, so I don't have to change the font size, change the color and make all the adjustment for the new one. It's already set as a menu item and so on. So now I'm going to choose a different beer. So I have my list here. So I'm going to choose course light for this one and then click generate legend. And I have my second button. Then you can actually select two of these and copy both and then paste them and move them together here. So that way you get two buttons at the same time now that we can. And we'll go back to a different menu item, select Yingling and then click generate legend. And now let's go and let's choose another beer. Let's go to an imported beer. I'm gonna choose a Corona and then generate legend. And I can copy all these four now and then paste them and then move them here. And I continue adding on beers here. Other items you can add on your speed bar can be payment keys. So let's say that you run a lot of cash, then you can just go and copy the cash key and even the credit card keys. So I can copy this guy and then also put them here on my speed screen, kind of in this bottom right corner. And then I can copy my credit card keys and I can also place them on my speed screen just above the cash. But this way, if you're in a scenario where people come, they order a beer and they cash out right away, they just walk away with their beer, then the bartender doesn't have to switch to the payment screen. Uh, they're all going to stay in the one screen. Another thing we can change for the speed bar screen in this situation is to change its visibility and default states. So if you have a screen like mine where the bartenders and servers and everybody else shares the same screen, I wouldn't want the servers to see this screen or even go to it. So what I can do is here after I click on it, I can see on the bottom left, we have configuration where we change the name, but we also have visibility rules. So I can check this box to say this item is visible when and then click edit conditions. And then I'm going to add a specific condition when this is going to be visible. So my condition will be revenue center. And then I can click here on select. So I see I have revenue center one for restaurant and revenue center two for bar. So what I'm going to do is in this field, I'm just going to enter the value two. So then this speed bar screen is visible when we are in the bar revenue center. Basically, that's what this condition says and then I can click OK, but I can also take it one step further by setting the default. So I can also say this item is the default and then add the same condition. So if somebody from the bar revenue center signs in to their workstation, then instead of going to the food items here, 
they're going to go straight to the speed bar. So now that we have our two conditions in, go ahead and fill up your entire page with all the menu items and drinks that you would need, and then go ahead and save. Okay, so now let's go to one of our workstations and see what we've done. The first thing I'm going to do is click a quick update to make sure that all my updates come through. Then I'm going to click on my sign in key and I'm going to sign in to the restaurant. If I begin a fast transaction, what happens is I get taken to the appetizer screen, which is perfect. So any server that would sign in to the regular restaurant would not be affected by our speed bar in any way. We can go ahead and sign out. And now let's try signing in to the bar revenue center and see if that's any different. So I'm going to select bar from my revenue center here, click OK, begin a fast transaction. And now notice we have this extra button here at the top right called the speed bar. So that way you can create this button just to be available in the bar revenue center. And it's going to be very useful for the bartenders. But at the same time, it's not going to bother the servers at all. That's it for this video on creating a speed screen. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you use a speed screen for and how would you optimize it and make it faster and better. If you are interested in more Symfony tutorials, we have created an entire platform that will teach you everything you need to know in order to maintain your Oracle Micro Symfony POS system. You can also ask for help from our programming team. You can access everything by visiting simsupport.online. And as a special thank you, I am also including a coupon code for you. You can find all the details in the description below. Leave a like if you found this helpful and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.